Hey everybody, Benny P here with Lovely Lakes Fly Fishing and on today's fishing adventure I'm hiking back in a couple miles to a wild brook trout stream. This stream is fed with a lot of different springs so it usually stays cold and we're going to check the water temperature and if the temperature is cold enough I'm going to go ahead and fish for wild brook trout. And on my way back in I decided I'd stop and I'd talk about something you have to be aware of in northern Pennsylvania in the summertime and that's rattlesnakes. I'm headed back in. I'm in full camo pants. I do not have any kind of gaiters on or snake boots or anything like that, but I'm going to stay on this trail that I have here in front of me. I'm going to work my way back to the stream and I'm going to keep my eyes open the whole way. So if you're working back into a spot in northern Pennsylvania, don't go back in shorts and be aware that there are rattlesnakes out moving in the summertime. Just wanted to give that quick warning to anybody who's out there exploring and as I head back in, I'm going to keep my eyes open and hopefully I don't bump into any of those buggers. I headed back in and I'm getting a little excited and I'm going to watch my way through here. Like I said, this is snake country. You've got to watch every step and you have to pause for a second and look ahead. But I want to take a quick look at the stream. I'm working my way up it. I like to fish the headwaters. And these streams out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I can see it. It's pretty far down there and there is water in it. Okay, there it is. That's a great thing. There's more water in this stream probably than the main streams out by the road. This is a good sign. I'm just going to keep working my way up a little bit more, then we're going to jump in and get started. Okay, check this out. You can see, I'll get a little closer. You can see that, that's spring water coming down through. And these are all through this mountain. And it comes down through. And then the main stream's out here. And that keeps all this all this mainstream full of water year round cold water and you can hear the sound of the water there are beautiful fun pools here um, streams not up there hasn't been a ton of rain but it's holding plenty of water and we're gonna try to dry fly fish this today oh yeah time to get ready to go fishing I'm gonna go ahead and change up into my fishing gear we'll check a water temperature reading make sure it's cool enough and I'm gonna tell you I can feel the coolness coming off there, but you always have to check. We'll make sure the water's cool enough. I'll go over the flies I'm going to be using um, and go over the rod I brought. I'll explain that. I have the wrong rod, but it's going to work just fine. And some of the gear that I'll be using, and we'll hit the water. All right, I'm suited up and ready to fish. Uh, go over some things real quick. I like polarized glasses. I may not use them. It's very overcast today, but uh, if it gets sunny, if I'm not seeing in the water well, I'm going to use these just for looking for holding spots. My cell phone. This is my OPRO rod holder. I love this thing when I'm out on the water. I keep this on my side, and I have a place to put my rod. It especially works good when you're filming. So. Bugger is going to go right there on my side. Another product that I'll have on my other side, my left side, is my Lively Legs net attached with my Lively Legs net man, and that keeps my net in the perfect spot for netting fish. And I'm just going to put it right on the back of my hip. That's where I like it. There it is. You can see it's in a ready go position as well. I did bring my thermocell today. And uh, if the mosquitoes get bad, I'm going to turn that on. And I have a head net, and that may go on as well because on the way in, the no seams were all over me. I'll be moving slow now. They'll probably stick with me a little bit more. So if you see me with the head net on, you understand why. That's just to keep the insects off my face. I think that's a pretty good rundown. Uh, let me grab my rod, and I'll explain this one as well. I would much rather have my 7.5 foot 3 weight Reddington Classic Trout. But when I got in my rod box, I thought I had it in there, and I didn't have it in there. For some reason, I have my four weight. Still, it's going to work fine. It's an eight-foot rod. It'll cast these dry flies. Very nice. I have it outfitted with my Zero Reel, and this is a Rio Weight Forward Dry Fly Line. So I said about wanting to catch them on a dry flies, and I fished this stream one time whenever I came back in and explored and found this stream and it was back in early June. 
and I caught everything on nymphs. That's all I fished. I'm going to try dry fly fishing this stream because I want to catch them on top today. And there's my display of dry flies. I have stimulators. I have royal wolves. I have royal coachmen's. I have griffith gnats, caddises, tan and olive caddises, and black ants. And there's a look at the flies that I plan on using. Now if I can't get a fish to come up top, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my lively leg nymphs. And the leader I'm going to be using today is a 9 foot 6x, 3.4 pound Rio leader. All those products and many more available at livelylegs.com, including a thermometer. We're going to take this down and we're going to get a water check before we start now. All right, time to check the water temperature. And I'm going to tell you, if you don't have a thermometer, you need to get one. Right now we're looking at, let me see here, air temperature. I'm not saying above 80. I mean, it's probably hot from being in my bag, but you can see it's above 80. We're going to drop that in. I didn't think it was 80 degrees today. When I got out of the truck, it was low 70s and hasn't been that long ago, but who knows? And we check it in, and we get it on there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's reading maybe 61, 62 degrees. It's way down, and that's a good temperature. Okay, first of all, let's see if we can ping one up into this little, just a little plunge. Got some nice structure underneath it, and it's carrying a little bit of water. The thing is to stay low. Got my fly on my finger. Missed one. We'll get him back in there. Small fish. Definitely did not feel the hook. We'll see if he spooked. Okay, first spot. I'm not so sure the fish was big enough to get the fly in its mouth. I'm using a size 14 stimulator. That's what I'm starting with. And if I notice I'm missing a bunch of fish, I'll drop down to a smaller tan caddis or a, a black ant. You can see up the stream there's little plunge pulls the whole way up the stream. I'll work every one of those just like that last spot. All right, third spot, and I just flung that little bugger up in. To, you can see where that plunge pull is, and have a beautiful looking little brookie. Let's take a look at it. There it is, you can see that stimulator's right in the corner of his mouth. Let's get that bugger off and back in the water. Okay, got that guy back in the water, and the rain started, so I'm gonna have to get out. I use a Ziploc bag and put it over the camera until this rain stops. I don't think it's going to stick around for long, but got to play it safe. Camera's not waterproof, and I'd like to make a video today. All right, the stream right here, right on the other side of this rock right here, is a nice little soft spot, and it's deeper. And I'm expecting a trout to be laying in there. We'll see if there's one big enough to take this fly. Bring the camera down here by the water so I can show you this guy. A nice looking little native brook trout. What a little gem. Look at the par marks on that beauty. He goes back out to his holding spot. Okay, I'm going to walk you up here. I'm not going to try for another fish here. And there's the rock. The water's coming down through. Creates this nice soft spot. It's a little bit deeper. Gives a trout a place to hide and ambush food, prey, which was my fly. I pulled him. And let's take a look at that. And you can see nice oxygenated run coming down through cold mountain water. And look at all this nice holding water right here for a brook trout. We could, we could easily be hiding up under that rock there. 
there's small little rocks like I'm going to show you. This right here. You can get the glare off there. Trout are tucked into spots like that, these native brookies. And when that fly hits and it comes down through, and it gets about right in here, probably about the spot where that fish was hiding, comes out and they ambush. Okay, we're a couple fish into the day and this dry fly is a little slimed up. You know, has that fish slime on it. And uh, what I like to do at this point is, I'll dry it off some. My sleeve's not the perfect thing right now because it's been raining. That'll get some of that slime off there. And then we take some of this dry shake. And this one here, it's made by Loon. It's top ride. It's the one that we offer at LiveTheLegs.com. Take your dry fly. You drop it in there. Shake it up. Pull it out. Don't breathe that in. Shake it off and it's ready to go again. Another product that we sell is Loon Aqual. And let me show you that it comes in a little container like this this is awesome as well but if you have CDC feathers on your flies you don't want to use this because it'll gum them up so you have aqua and top ride two of the great products we offer at livelylegs.com and that will keep your fly afloat all right some more beautiful holding water up here I've got my fly all dried off and I'm gonna stay back so I don't spook the fish I'm fishing upstream as well one thing I forgot to mention, you want to fish upstream because when you're coming downstream, spots like this, most likely you're going to be above the fish and spooking them and look like a predator. So make sure you're fishing it's upstream, you're fishing it slow, and you're staying back so the fish don't see you. But I'm starting a lot of my casts just like that. Holding the fly between my pointer finger and my thumb, and I'm kind of just launching it out there. All right, with this spot, there's some nice hold water coming down. You can see that great plunge coming down through the rocks. I need to use this rock to keep me hidden. So I'm gonna sneak up and stay below it and cast right over top of it, right in here. So I'm gonna stay below this rock, cast over it into here, and wait for a fish to come up and ambush. What a nice little ambush spot. He was actually on the other side. Oh, this is a gorgeous fish. He was on the other side. I missed one on this side. Hit one time, and sometimes that's all you get on a, a smart rookie. And this one was up under this big rock here. I'll have to show you after I show you the fish. And he just pulverized it. There he is. One beautiful PA native right there. back in there and surprisingly I got another check out this little gem right here a little bit smaller but another absolute gorgeous native brook trout all right four fish in I went ahead and I changed up I put on the Royal Royal Wolf and we're gonna buzz that little bugger out there but before I do that I want to take you up and I want to show you this spot here it's absolutely gorgeous even if there wasn't a fish here I really enjoyed just checking this spot out and giving it a chance let me walk you up there to see that okay as we walk up this right here that's the rock that I was hiding behind these two rocks here I had a nice take here and it looked like a decent sized brookie it was a no-go but right back in here is where I actually caught that one. He was out a little bit. He might have come from back underneath that rock. And then the next one was a little further up here. So two fish out of this spot, which is awesome. One there, up to four fish. Did a little change of flies, and let's see how we do up ahead.
gonna bring this one up to the camera real quick. This is an absolute dink. I'm gonna toss it right back in. Oh crap, popped out of the net. All right, I had to get that fish down in the water fast. The cool thing with the net man, it comes with the lanyard. You can take your net off your side real quick, put it down in the water with the fish, come back up, grab the camera, and let me go down and show you this dink. It hit that royal wolf as soon as it hit the water. Okay, we're down here. I had the little dinker brookie in the net. And you see, we have a rubber-coated mesh net. And the cool thing about this net is it's big enough to hold a big trout, but the holes, the rubber-coated mesh, the holes, little brookies don't slide through it. Let me see if I can get that little bugger out of there. He is teeny. Look at that guy. It's almost hard to believe that guy put size 14 fly in his mouth. Let's get him back in and head back up there and see if I didn't blow this spot up. Okay, like I said, the net man, the lanyard clips right to the net man. And if you ever have to take your net off and hand it to a buddy, it's real easy to do with these little clips we have on it. I don't know if you can see it in the video, also how easy it is for me to grab my net off my side and net these fish. But this spot looked a lot better than a fish like that. But seeing that I had to get it down in the water fast, we're going to see if uh, the big boy that's probably in here, if it'll hit. And see if I didn't blow up this water. Once again, I'm going to take this fish down, put it in the water. Can't believe it, got another one there. Okay, let's go down and check this guy out. Alright, six fish in the bag. Pretty good day so far. Before I head up the water any further, I'm just going to talk a little bit about getting out and exploring and the rewarding feeling of it. You know, Iron Mike, he's a great explorer of water. Um, he always talks about how great it is when you get to a new spot and you find fish, and he's absolutely right. You know, this spot right here, this particular stream, I had a hunch about it. I was told by a couple people it didn't hold fish, and uh, that it, it was polluted and fished out many years ago. But I didn't let that stop me from getting out and exploring this stream. I came here in June. I hiked up into the stream. I nymph fish, and I did pretty well. Now, there are other streams that have a higher population. So I will say there were probably times that this stream was fished out, and it was polluted. But right now, this stream is doing a great job holding fish. And look at the bonus. I mean, you have landscape and things to look at, like this nice little plunge pool waterfall. And then the rhododendron right here, check this out. It's in bloom. We're in the beginning of August and we are bloomed up. And the trout stream is 61, 62 degrees. And it's just perfect to fish. So I'm just strongly encouraging people, get out on your own, try some streams. You're gonna strike out. Believe me, you're gonna strike out more than you're gonna hit home runs, but you have to get out and you have to give this a try. All right, look at this gorgeous little holding spot here. And so here's my approach to it. There's some holding water right here. You can see where the run's coming through. Little soft spot here, soft spot on the other side. So I have this rhododendron. I'm gonna have to cast under it, but I'm gonna have to use it also as my cover as I sneak up on this spot. So I'm gonna sneak up through here and try to bunk a cast into there and then dink one into there and see if I can't pull a brookie out of this spot. Zoom in just a little piece here. Okay, let me go to action. And that was fast. One cast, pinged it right in there, right where I wanted to put it. Perfect cast. Let's go take a look at this guy. Here he is, a stunning native brookie, the royal wolf still getting the job done. Let's get him back in the water.
we go. That's a pretty nice one. The tough thing is if you're filming yourself, you don't want to you know, wait to see this one. This one's a nice one. I'm going to put them in my hand here and bring them up. There we go. That's a gorgeous native brookie. Let that fly out of there. What I was saying was, if you're filming yourself, sometimes you have to keep that camera way back. Because if you bring it up too close, you get yourself busted, you're never going to catch these fish. This fish right here is in an open spot. And if I would have taken the camera up there with me and got too close, I would have busted myself on this fish. It's probably the nicest one of the day. And away he goes. Alright, I just wanted to walk up and take a closer look at this spot. And you can see exactly why that brookie's there. It's not that it's just deep green water, but you see this rock right here? That brookie's under that rock and he's looking up and as soon as that fly dropped into there, and as you can tell, that's a terrestrial look. I'm throwing that thing hard. It's hitting the water surface hard. It's looking like an insect's falling out of this tree and hitting the water. And that guy exploded on it. I'm sure you're going to be able to see it in the video. He just comes up and he devours it. All right, this could be an absolute cool, cool, cool spot, cool video clip. I'm setting the camera up pretty far away. I'm going to sneak around this rhododendron on this rock and I'm just gonna take the end of my rod and just drop my dry fly right there and see if there's not one just hiding right in this little soft spot in between these two plunges right here. Let me go give her a try. All right, that was too cool. I think I, I know I had two fish hooked. I may have had three fish hooked, and I just couldn't bring them around, and I hope you can see them in the video. If so, um, I'm leaving that clip in there. Well, that one was a little different. I threw my dry fly out there and it sunk, so I just pulled it through the water like a wet fly. And that's a hoot. I mean, this is a hoot. You see that? I got a spider web here. Had to set the camera up on one side. I got on the other side so that um, I didn't spook the fish. I kept the camera back in the cover and it worked out well. But let's take a look at this little guy. All right, there's another little mountain gem. Let him go and Look at this great holding spot. Really slow. Um, my dry fly hit and went started sinking, so I just kind of pulled it through like it was a wet fly and paused it a couple of times, and he ran out from under this rock right here and grabbed it. Just take a pause and take a look at this beautiful canopy over the stream. We have the rhododendron coming out over the stream, and we have hemlocks, hemlock trees. What that does is, not only is that gorgeous for this setting, but it also creates a nice cool environment for these fish. And not only a nice cool environment, but overhead predators have more trouble getting in when these fish are hiding under canopy and hiding under rocks. So anytime a fish can get under like a rock like that or say this canopy was out over the water, it's a safe place for a fish. You as a fly fisher, you have to learn how to cast back into those spots because that's where you're going to trick the fish the most. If you can get cast into spots like that, you're going to catch more fish. So always go out and challenge yourself. You lose some flies, you lose some flies. It is what it is. But the more you take casts under canopy and back into spots like that, the better chance you're going to have at catching more fish and have more success on the water. Uh, canopy, talk about it again, provides coolness and shade and that really helps the trout stream out. This trout stream is very lucky. It has not only the canopy, it also has fresh mountain springs running into it. And that's what makes a stream like this so good. So if you come, if you go through the mountains and you find little springs running into the stream and you find beautiful canopy like that, most likely you're gonna find native brook trout.
All right, that's still that royal wolf, and uh, I'm enjoying fishing it. So I'm going to keep him on there. He's hooking the fish well. And since that bugger's starting to sink a little more, I'm going to go ahead and go with the... Let me show you this product again. It's Loon Aqua. And this is more of a gel. And I'm going to give it just a little squirt up by the hackle feathers. I'm going to smear it into there. And that's all it takes, just a little bit. And it's going to help that fly float and stay high on the water. That's a nice representation of a brook trout right there. Let's go take a look at this guy, and then I'll explain the situation. There he is, safely in the net. And you can see that is a nice looking brookie. Good size to him. Let me get my hand under him so I can show you his side. Got a beautiful looking pink hue to him. There it is, you can see. Dark, has a pink hue. Um, I'm also gonna say this. Before I touch this fish, I wet my hands. And that's something you want to do. Don't pick up a fish with dry hands. But look at that. That's a beaut. And last look as he goes into the water. And off he goes. Let's go on. And uh, that fish, and I snuck up. I set the camera up. And I thought, there's going to be a fish here or here. I dropped that cast right here. And as it made its way and circled around, I said, ah, crap. Nothing's coming out, and out of nowhere, he came out and grabbed it. And you can see, I'm able to sneak up this way. If I'd have been coming downstream, and he's under there, you know, your current's coming this way, so the fish is facing upstream. And if he's sitting under there, and I'm coming downstream, there's a good chance I'm going to spook that fish. So I worked upstream, threw up above that rock, let it come down through, and he came out, and he just ambushed it. All right, looking to end the video on a fish. And you can see great holding spot up into here. Big rock. I'm going to sneak in from behind this tree over here and try to zing a cast up into there and get one. And that is a stunning little fish. It's going to be my last fish of the day. Zoom in, you can see the fly. I don't even know how you catch them when they're that small with the fly that big. But these are aggressive feeders, and they seem to take that fly like there's no tomorrow. Man, that's, that's how we do it right here. That's Pennsylvania, dry fly fishing in the summertime. Find cold water, be sure. Get a thermometer, we have those also available at LivelyLegs.com. Very inexpensive tool to have on the water. You want to protect those fish. It's about the next generation being able to fish and the next generation of fish being able to survive. I hope anybody watching the video that was looking for tips, you were able to find some tips today that help you in the future. I'd like to thank everybody for following along. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and right here on YouTube. And until next time, Best of luck in the water.